In this video, I'll be showing you the easiest way to build powerful custom tools for your GPTs without coding step-by-step step, using a new platform that no one is talking about right now. This has been a highly requested video because many of you have started creating your own custom GPTs, but don't know how to easily create and connect powerful tools, that, the powerful tools that you need to make your GPTs actually useful for your business or for your use case. The truth is these tools are where the real value is created with GPTs but the process for making them can be very difficult, especially for people who don't know how to code. Not knowing how to create these tools can prevent you from making the most of this new opportunity. By the end of this video, you'll not only know how to create and connect custom tools to your own GPTs, but you'll also get a head start on learning one of the most valuable new skills for anyone looking to make money or build businesses in the AI space in 2024 before everyone else catches on. If you're new to the channel and don't know who I am, my name is Liam Otley and I run my own AI development company called Morningside AI. And I also run the largest community of AI agency owners in the world, where my students learn how to make money by selling AI solutions to businesses, just like the custom GPTs you're about to build. Let's get into it. Okay, before we get into the build, I do want to talk about just how important what I'm about to teach you is moving forward into 2024, because tool creation and being able to plan and create custom tools for businesses or for other GPT builders, there's so much opportunity here that I really want you guys to just give me a couple minutes so that I can explain why this is gonna be such an important skill to have moving forward. If you've watched my recent videos, you'll know that when I talk about GPTs, I say that there's always three key ingredients that you need to create them. Firstly, being prompting, second being the knowledge, and thirdly, being the actions. For you as the developer or the builder of this GPT, of this assistant, you have a canvas that you get to choose what you want to put on it or ingredients that you want to include in the dish. So the different combinations of the prompting, the prompting information that you give it, the knowledge that you give as its knowledge base, the actions that you provide to it, you get to assemble these and create different GPTs and different assistants depending on how you use these ingredients. Now, any idiot can use prompting. We've all been prompting ChatGPT for a year now, so we know how to write instructions for the AI. We know how to get documents and upload them. We've had chat with PDF, we've done all these things. That leaves the final one, which is actions and functions that are the sort of last frontier or final frontier of what we have to work with right now. That is the most difficult area that many people are not gonna be able to get into and really touch. So if you're looking to play into this opportunity of creating GPTs either for the store or for businesses, you need to focus on the most difficult one and learn how to make custom tools and actions and focus your time on learning that as a skill so that you're able to create GPTs that are far more powerful than anyone else, which is what this video is about. I wanted to introduce you to a way that you can create your own custom tools without coding in many cases, which allows you to unlock a whole new world of potential for what you can include in your builds. The terminology or the name for tools can be changed around quite a bit. Sometimes it's action, sometimes it's custom action, sometimes it's capabilities, sometimes it's custom function, sometimes it's tools. They basically all mean the same thing. When creating a tool and making it available to our assistant or our GPT, it now has the ability to intelligently call that tool, and in this case, it's going to be functions or they take a couple inputs and we do some processing and we send information back or expect some inputs and then we go and do something in the background. These are the kind of tools that you can assemble in the toolkit of your GPT to make it far more useful. So for a business owner, if they want it to be able to update something in their CRM or that you want it to be able to call an API and get some information from the web somewhere. These kind of things can all be created around tools and in this video, that's what I'm gonna focus on teaching you how to do. Creating tooling like this is really the future and OpenAI is going all in on it. We're just starting to see the other companies pick up on it as well. We have Claude 2.1 by Anthropic, which is including tooling in it as well. And this is clearly the direction we're going where all these businesses who want to benefit from this new technology and from using assistants like this, they're going to need to have custom tools created for every part of their business to connect into an assistant like this that can actually do things throughout their business. Because of this boom that has just started of these assistants now needing tooling and custom tooling that can allow them to do things, there's going to be a massive need for people who can create these tools and tool marketplaces where you can sit down here and create what I'm about to show you and then list it on the tool marketplace and people can start to use that in their own GPT. So you may have people creating on the GPT store, you can be a layer below that where you're like a, a tool that they can use to create the GPT and they can be paying you some of the money that they're creating off of. In this tutorial, we are going to be creating an outreach assistant GPT that has got access to three custom tools. One is going to allow it to search and research a company by URL. Secondly, it's going to find leads for that company so we can provide a company name and also the role that we want to find for it. It's going to find the person and their LinkedIn profile. And finally, it's going to be able to generate a personalized outreach message for connecting on LinkedIn. So 
kind of all ties together well and I thought I'd pick three different tools that you can combine into one GPT here and use it as, a, as an assistant for someone maybe in your team. So you have a assistant or a VA that is going through it and finding and doing lead generation for you or sending outreach messages for you. This is a, an example of how you can do that using custom tooling. The most important part of this build is the platform that you can build your custom tools on top of. As you've seen in my previous videos, to create custom tools, you typically have to use custom code. You have to write, get a replit out. You have to write all the functions and, and connect it all up. And I know for many of you, that's not, uh, not, not possible. Uh, at least if you want to take that and modify it and change the tools around, it's not realistic for you if you actually want to start modifying these and making money with them. So Relevance AI is a platform that we've been working with in the Accelerator, my AAA Accelerator for a couple of months now as a, as a custom AI application builder. But what they've recently rolled out is, as you can see on screen here, you can take any of the AI applications that you built in their like no code builder, and then you can convert those into custom actions for your GPTs in just a couple clicks. So we're gonna be going through and pulling some of the templates out to get started, modifying those templates, and then sending that over to our GPT and connecting them up as custom tools and giving you a demo. So let's get stuck into it. Here on Relevance, I'm just going to log in. Once you're inside, you'll have your dashboard like this. Now there is a free plan on Relevance, so you will be able to follow along with this and do everything that I'm doing without having to pay anything initially. It's done on usage, which is great. But what we're going to do is go to the top left here, click on templates, and I'll show you how we can get started using some of the cool templates that they have. If we go down to, as we have down here, the research, if we go down to sales. So here's some of the examples that I picked up before. So I think I took the personalized LinkedIn request. I took the research company with website, research a company and find leads was the last one. So let me just check that these are all correct. And right away we can start to test these tools and see if the functionality is something that we want to connect into our custom GPT, keeping in mind that all of these fields that are required here, so the first name, the LinkedIn URL, the context, the company, these are going to be expected inputs. So if you want to use this tool in your custom GPT, you'll need to trigger it and say, hey, look, I want to generate a personalized LinkedIn request. Say, okay, great, give me the first name, LinkedIn URL. So these are the inputs that are gonna to need to be provided to it. It's going to take those inputs and essentially press this run tool button, run it and do all the processing in the background and then spit back the answer to the user. In order to see behind the scenes and how this is actually happening, you can just click the clone to edit button in the top right. So I can clone this template. And then you have all of that functionality that they've already built and it's laid out here in all of these steps. Now you can go through and, and pick through all of these. Essentially this is just doing a, a, getting the LinkedIn post from the LinkedIn URL, running it through an LLM. So this is really cool because you can create these AI applications with basically no code. This is all just prompting, inserting the variables from the previous step, nothing too complex, which is why I really love Relevance as a tool building platform. And they are clearly pivoting very heavily to serving this new market because we have a lot of advanced functionality that they're building into. If you watch my channel, you know I'm super big on platforms that make it easy for you to get started, but still have a ton of advanced functionality that you can progress to over time. And you give six, 12 months of using this thing and you become really, really capable at building cool stuff. So I love Relevance for that case. It's same with the other platforms that I use like make.com. I think it has a ton of depth in terms of what you can learn over time. And you can eventually, 12 months down the line, be a really capable automations dev or AI entrepreneur, whatever you want to call it. So that's how you can clone templates and edit them. For the sake of this video, I've already gone through and edited some of these. Um, as you can see on something like this, uh, company research and website, I've taken out the context about the product and service. So if I clone this, you'll see that it's got this extra input, which if you're using it for a GPT, you don't want to have to be always putting in information about your business. Because if you're giving it to a staff member and say, okay, this is a company research tool, you're probably only going to be researching on behalf of your company. So things like this, context about my product and service, I don't think are really necessary. So I've deleted this and you have to go through and remove it out of this. So context about my product, you can like go through and delete stuff like that. Don't worry, I'm gonna give you access to all of my templates. So I've already modified these and these are gonna be available on my resource hub. So let's just jump to that now where I show you the, the modified templates. So here we have the first tool, which is this general company research based on the URL. So just pull some stuff off their company URL. Uh, let's go goodyear.com, give that a run. And there we go, we get a summary of the company back, which might be helpful for our assistant or our VA who is using these tools in our eventual GPT, which we'll get to in a sec. Okay, so if we want to find a role in a company, let's go add it into a voice flow. Um, we want to find the CEO, we'll see if we can find Braden. And there we go, yep, it's found Braden Ring. His LinkedIn, company website, company summary. We can copy his LinkedIn URL and take it over to the next step here. If I paste in his LinkedIn URL and I give it the first name, Braden. 
I can run the tool and it's gonna generate a personalized LinkedIn connection request message that my VA can use these tools while they use the GPT that we're creating. And then they can take this message that we generate and then they can start a connection request on LinkedIn to start building more of a, of a network on LinkedIn and also open up the doors to potential communication as well. There we have it. I came across your LinkedIn and noticed your recent post about AI techniques for conversational interfaces. The topic caught my interest as many companies are seeking new ways to enhance customer experiences through technology. So that's personalized based off their recent post on LinkedIn. If you want to come in here and modify the templates that I put on a resource hub at all, so you'll be able to get this one, this one, this one. So you can follow this build along step by step. But if you do want to modify it, you just need to click on the build section up here. And then there's parts of it that you need to be aware of, like the LLM step where you have the prompting. And there's sometimes gonna be things that are specific to, in my case, Morningside. So take a look at the system prompt, take a look at the prompt at all stages. So we usually have a couple of different LLM steps. Um, but just be aware that there might be some stuff from my own company um, that's used in the prompting itself. There definitely is in the Generate Personalized LinkedIn Connection message one. If you do want me to do a full tutorial teaching you how to build tools with relevance, then let me know in the comment sections below because it's definitely something that I want to do at some point. Uh, if you guys comment down below, I'll definitely hurry that video up because I know even this kind of no-code interface can feel overwhelming at first. Once you have made the edits you want to make, we can hit the save button in the top right. Just go through and make sure these are all good to go. Yep, yep, yep. Then we can go back to our tool screen here and you will see in the top right there is a custom actions for GPTs button. In which case we can just take a quick look here make sure that I know exactly the ones that I want to use. So find role and company, generate LinkedIn connection message and research from company URL. So if I go click up here, I want to get this one. I want to get this one and I want to get this one. Now the amazing thing that Relevance allows us to do is in one click we can generate an open API schema that we can copy and paste over onto the ChatGPT site when we are creating our GPT. Then we also have a generate API key step which we'll go into in a second but this is the key part here where we've just converted all of the functions and the, the custom tooling that we've created on Relevance. We can now take this, this code snippet, this open API schema, copy it, not open AI, open API, it's, it's different, but we can copy this and put this straight into the chat GPT interface when we are creating our GPT, which is what we're going to do now. Actually, there is one more thing that I need to point out before you get into taking it into the chat GPT side, which is the name and the title and the description of your tools is very important because this is what's going to be carried over and basically be the natural language description of what your tools do. So you need to be here and make it very descriptive. So I've got general company research from company URL, do general research on a company based on their website. So very specific about what this particular tool does. In this case, find role and company, find the name of a person, the output within a company by role, by the input. Again, and here we have the generate personalized LinkedIn connection message, write a personalized first line for an outreach message based off a prospect's LinkedIn profile. So I've been very descriptive and very specific because when we take it over to ChatGPT and we export this, these tools and connect it to our GPT, that information is going to be used and help our assistant to know what tool to use and when. And that's basically its description of the tooling. So make sure if you are modifying these, you're changing other tools that if your tools aren't being called correctly in ChatGPT in the interface, the issue is likely that you haven't been descriptive enough in the descriptions of your tools. Heading over to ChatGPT now to start creating our GPTs. You do need to have the ChatGPT Plus, I believe, to create these GPTs. So if you don't have that already, I think they've blocked it off. So if you want to be able to create GPTs, you can sign up to my platform Agentive, which is in the description as well. You can do this whole thing without needing to have a ChatGPT Plus account. For now, we'll go in and create a new GPT. As I said, I'm gonna to jump to the configure because I'm a big boy. Um, let's call this Outreach Expert, uh, Outreach Copilot. Let's give it a cool name. It's going to assist my assistant in doing outreach and lead generation for us. So um, assists with lead gen and outreach. Then I have a prompt, which I'll paste in here and we'll get back to in a second. I don't need to do a little bit more so I can explain it to you. Then scrolling down, we can check all of these capabilities off. We don't need them for now, but what we do need is the custom actions down here. And this is where we can go back to Relevance AI and copy this schema, copy this paste it in here and then boom we have all three of our tools that pop up here ready to use which we're going to use in a second but then the last step that we need to do is click on the cog here on the authentication we need to go API key then we need to head back to relevance click on generate API key copy this go back paste in the API key and then when we click on custom here we need to put in authorization which is a key bit that it's, it's very easy to forget when I click on save here 
should be all ready to go. With these all loaded in, what I've done is copied these. You can follow the same concept for creating yours if you are modifying and going away from this specifically. But what I did to create my prompt is I copied all of these and I headed back to the instruction section. And as you can see, I've pasted it in here. I'll put it here so it's a bit messy, but essentially I took that same thing, I trimmed this down and I got each of the names of the actions as I have them here. And then I did a little description of each. So in this case, I said generate personalized LinkedIn connection message. This function generates da 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 da. I'll let you pause it and take a look. Basically, I'm just telling the assistant that they will have three actions that are available to do this above objective. And then I give a bit of an explanation on what the, each of the tools does and how they can use it, the kind of inputs and outputs and stuff like that. I also added this little bit at the end here, which is when the tools return information, the assistant does not need to give big long summaries because when I was testing it, I noticed that it, it kind of rambled on quite a bit. If you are creating assistance using custom tooling, I do recommend that you add in a little description of each of the tools and sort of relate that back to how it's supposed to help the, the core purpose of the assistant. And with that, I can generate a image with Dali. Maybe I set a couple conversation starters. I have some over here. What can you help me with? I have research company. These are the different actions or functions. So this is how you can make it quite user friendly. So for people when they first log on here, they can click one of these buttons and it's going to allow them to quickly call one of the actions that you've made available to it. So here we have Outreach Copilot. Great, we can give it a spin. What can you help me with? Sweet, so it's given us a breakdown of what it can help us with. Okay, so let's go researchmake.com. Boom, it's starting an action, and now it's asking us for permission to call that action, which we can allow. Now it's talking to our apps that now tools on Relevance AI, as you can see here. And there it spat back the response. It is important when you are doing this testing in the configuration interface as we are in here. So you can drop these down in here. I believe the first two that we have here is, is like a check-in to make sure that we can approve it. I think it's the request for approval. And then we actually see what it's sending off. So it might look a little bit complex, but the key thing here is that you can click this drop down here and we can see that it's sending off the params or the information that we're sending as an input is the URL to make.com, which is what our general company research. If we go to the use tab, we can see that it's expecting a company website URL, which is what we're sending off. So that means it's doing its job correctly and it's giving us back the response correctly. Then we can go a step beyond that and say, okay, can you find me their CTO? And now we want to find make CTO. Oh, we're gonna allow it. It's picked up on the function call correctly. Give it a second. Yep, make.com and role CTO. Those again were the two inputs that we expect, the company name and the role to find. The error that we just ran into here is a good one to run into while we're on this tutorial, which is a timeout issue. You may see this thing pop up over and over and error occur while executing the plugin. That's because there is a 60 second timeout, I believe, if, when I was talking to the relevance team. There's a 60 second timeout that OpenAI allows. So if your tool takes longer than 60 seconds to respond, it's going to come back and not be able to give them the information. That means at this stage, some of the tools you create and connect to your GPTs are going to need to be a lot shorter than you'd expect because if it takes 300, 400 seconds to generate this big long response, it's not going to be able to be used within your system. Well, if make.com is not going to work for us, let's just go back to the old faithful voice. Find the voice flow CEO. Allow. Calling and sent off voice flow and CEO. That's what we want. Yep, sent off the right params. And then we have his LinkedIn profile. It's given us a bit of a summary. Okay, so now we can try to generate a personalized connection message for him based off of this. So it should already have his LinkedIn URL, which is one of the inputs we need here. So we need the LinkedIn URL and we need the first name. And in this case, we have his name and his LinkedIn URL. It's going to send off some information. And then we have it, it's used our tool to generate a personalized connection message for LinkedIn. Hi Braden, I came across your LinkedIn profile, noticed your recent post about AI techniques and conversational interfaces. So this is pulling from his recent post, which is great. This is much higher converting than a, a generic one that's just generated or written by a VA. And then we have shown that all three of our tools are working within this editor here. We can now save it, I can go only me. There you have your own GPT that's created with custom tooling using Relevance AI. And you can start to use this as you need. You can share it with the people in your team. But the issue here is that you're only going to be able to use this within the GPT interface. Unfortunately, if you want to take all this awesome functionality that you've built and put it on your website or put, use it via SMS or Instagram or WhatsApp, 
your assistant is still going to be stuck on the ChatGPT site. Now I've covered how to build custom GPTs that you can use in the real world on my channel extensively, so you can use them to drive real growth in your businesses, but the process to actually export these GPTs and assistants to wherever you want to use them is quite complicated for beginners right now, which is why my team and I at Morningside have created Agentive, and yes, I've been talking about this a lot recently, but we have just opened up to our first 500 members, and it's our platform that makes this entire process and putting this exact stuff onto your website or Instagram or WhatsApp, wherever you need to do it, it makes it dead simple for entrepreneurs who are looking to take advantage of this, but don't necessarily know how to code or don't want to do all the, the heavy legwork of getting all the custom code written. As I said, we're currently in early access, but we will be letting in batches of new users over the next week or two. So if you want to get in there before everyone else, the link to sign up to our waitlist is going to be in the description if you haven't already. We are super excited to roll out a ton more features on Agenda very soon. that will allow you to do this and start to make money and build these for businesses and build it for your own businesses as fast as possible. But the key thing here is that you've learned the skill of being able to create custom tooling, which is something basically no one knows how to do right now. So if you can learn how to use relevance or find other platforms if you wish, I'm not forcing you to use this one. This is just what I like using. This is what my community likes using as well. And I think the way that they are allowing you to create these custom tools and easily put them onto your GPTs is super smart and super user friendly for people who don't necessarily know how to code. So that's about all for the video. If you've enjoyed it, please hit down below and leave a like on the video. Let me know that this is the kind of stuff you want to see more of. As I said, I think tooling is going to be at least one of the most valuable skills in 2024 and beyond just because every business is going to need custom tooling that allows their business to interact or be or operated via these assistants so there's going to be huge demand for it and if you guys want me to cover this more on the channel then let me know in the comments below if you want a full tooling guide i can definitely do one of those for you and while you're down there you can subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you can stay in the loop on my ai entrepreneurship focused content teaching you how to best take advantage of the AI opportunity and teaching you how to implement AI into businesses and sell those as solutions. So if that's interesting to you, you can subscribe to the channel, comment down below or so. And as mentioned, all of the resources, the templates for relevance, everything that I've covered in here is going to be available on my resource hub with the first link in the description. So you can steal all that, try to follow this build along step by step so that you can take this and start to apply it to your own businesses or sell it to others. If you want to continue watching and see me put a custom GPT like this onto a website, you can do so here. But aside from that, that's all for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.